Hey guys, what is going on? This is iAppleGeek, and today I want to show you some of the hidden features inside of iOS 12 that you may not have known about. Now obviously there are a lot of new features inside of iOS 12 that aren't really on the surface. The things that Apple announced at their WWDC 2018 were just kind of like their selling point things. But what about the things that actually matter in day-to-day -day use? So first off, I just want to quickly mention that I won't be talking about the big trademark uh, features that Apple has on their website. Those things will be pretty widespread by the time this video gets to YouTube. If you guys want me to review the bigger features, uh, definitely be sure to let me know in the comments. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is that Face ID supports more than one face now. So if you go into settings and you scroll down here to a Face ID and passcode, I'm just going to enter this in. And inside of the Face ID settings, uh, you can scroll down here and there's a new button for set up an alternate appearance. When you click on that, it's going to bring you to the uh, Face ID setup screen again, just like you did the first time and you can set up two faces. Now this is actually for when you're wearing stuff or if you look different, you're wearing makeup or whatever. Uh, however, you can also use this to set up a completely different person, which I think is pretty nice. So it's no longer limited to just you. Please wait. All right, so I just wanna quickly remind you guys, iOS 12 is in beta right now and it's extremely unstable. So if you guys have not yet updated on your main device, do not do it. Unless you have a backup device to play around on, I would not recommend it. If you already did, don't worry. Just wait until more stable betas come out and be sure to update. Back to the video. All right, speaking of Face ID, uh, on the lock screen, there's actually a really handy new feature uh, that I really wanted in iOS 11, but it, it never came. It basically allows you to retry Face ID when you swipe up. You guys can see that Face ID kind of fails because obviously my camera is not me. Usually what you'd have to do is you have to hit cancel, then you got to go swipe up again, or you have to play with this little home bar thing to make it work. However, in iOS 12, uh, you can now just swipe up again and it'll repeat Face ID. So if I go ahead and put my face in, and it'll work just like that. You can just swipe up again to activate Face ID. Also, the Face ID has been really quick. Uh, uh, like that. I'm not even looking directly into the phone and it's just a lot faster than iOS 11 was and as you guys saw briefly there reachability has sort of a new interface on the iPhone 10 uh, I'm not sure about the other devices but when you activate this you get like this little arrow that allows you to drag back up on the screen all right another cool little thing I want to share with you is that uh, you know how on the iPhone 10 you take a screenshot with the volume buttons and the power button well, a lot of people have been getting the accidental screenshots, you know, when you pull your phone out of your pocket, it just takes a screenshot because, you know, you pinch down too hard on the sides or whatever. Uh, there is now actually a prevention for that in iOS 12. When you first, like when your phone is off and you click the buttons to, you know, take your phone out of your pocket, it actually does not take the screenshot, whereas before it did. For example, here uh, on an iOS 10 device, if the device is off and I go ahead and put in the screenshot command, it will wake up taking a screenshot, which can be really annoying. But in iOS 12, they actually put a prevention for that. So when you click the screenshot buttons, it does not do that. Now, low power mode now supports uh, Hey Siri, and it will activate even when you're in low power mode. So that's no longer a restriction of low power mode. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is some of the hidden settings for Do Not Disturb. If you go into Settings and Do Not Disturb, there is a new Bedtime Mode, which basically means it will silence all incoming notifications. Okay, so when you activate Bedtime Mode, it will look something like this. Your screen is going to be really, really dark, and it's going to say Calls and Notifications will be silenced. Notifications will also be sent to History. The history means when you when you swipe up like this, it tells you your notifications. This is really nice and it's easier on the eyes when you just wake up to go check your time and you're not just blasted with all these notifications. So inside a control center, you do have a 3D touch toggle now for Do Not Disturb. Uh, so basically you can activate do, do Not Disturb and it'll turn off automatically after a timer. Or you can even set it to your location. So if you like go to the movie theater, you can turn this on uh, and it'll automatically turn off when you leave the theater, which is really cool. And also just a quick mention here of screen time. This is one of the things they talked about in the keynote. Basically, this feature tells you how much of your device you're using and what you're using. There are several different modes. I'm not going to get into all of them, but some do require you to set a passcode, but they don't give you the option to take off the passcode if you so choose. So I found out that this is the same code used inside of the traditional restrictions tab under general. 
So if you want to disable or change your passcode, you have to go there to do it. There is no option for it inside of screen time. There are also now lock screen suggestions uh, for your application. So for example, if I missed a phone call, it will show up with a suggestion and it will tell me to call that person back and that missed call was at this time. These notifications are a different color than the normal uh, notifications, but it's still pretty handy to get a little reminder of, you know, if you missed a call, something important. And this isn't just restricted to the phone, it's for other apps as well. Also, when you have a notification on the lock screen, you can go ahead and slide over and hit manage and it will give you the options to deliver quietly, which means it silences the sound but still gives you the notification, or to turn off notifications for this particular uh, notification. And of course, it will let you go to the settings once you unlock to adjust to choose what happens with that app's notifications. Also, in the control center settings, if you scroll up here, uh, it is now a separate tab. And when you do go in here, there is a new button for scan QR code. And it's the same when you 3D touch on the camera icon. There's now a scan QR code. When you open it up, it'll actually just open up like this. Um, and you can use this right now to scan any codes that you might want to. Also on the iPhone 10, the status bar inside the control center now has a bigger font, so it is easier to see. And speaking of the status bar, uh, I did want to quickly talk about the iPad. The iPad is a device that will probably get an iPhone 10 style refresh later this year. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because they've converted the gestures, remember the pinch in and the swipe up to get to the dock and stuff like that. Um, on the iPad, they've added a new control center swipe down like this, just like on the iPhone 10, and a home gesture for swiping up. So if I'm in an application, I can just swipe up to go home, just like on the iPhone 10. And I can also enter multitasking by holding up like that, or I can also swipe in between apps just like on the iPhone 10 by swiping up and over, which is pretty interesting. So there is really no need for the home button anymore except for Touch ID. This really speaks to a uh, newer iPad later in the year that has Face ID to really take advantage of these gestures. Really interesting stuff. But anyways guys, that's gonna be it for this video. Uh, surely Apple will add a lot more features in the future. These are just some of the hidden things that I managed to find. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, don't forget to rate me up. That'd be great. Also, if you want more updates on iOS 12, follow me on Twitter. That'd be great. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.